welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. This is Stranger Palooza. We're at the 2022 Overland Expo East in Arrington, Virginia. We've got PJ of Mod Vans here with us. You remember last year we did a video with you guys? Yeah, I did. With you and JT. JT. Chief Engineer. Right, exactly. He's not here. He's not here this show. Yes, he's not here at this show. He's missing out on all the fun. Mod Vans is really one of my favorite builders out there for vans right these guys actually innovate and do what's different when i talk to a lot of the bigger van makers they're always telling me oh we can't do this it's not possible to do that somehow you guys yeah i don't know if you're like talking to aliens Why is that? <laughs> yeah how are you doing it I want to remind you that we have these Vanasaur t-shirts and a new one is out. This is Campfire by Moonlight. New Vanasaur t-shirt, that's how you pronounce that if you're a fan of Class B camper vans, whether it's Sprinter, Promaster, or the Transit. You can get these t-shirts, show your love for that, and support Stranger Palooza. And we don't have any like logos or anything like that on it. Plus, you can get Stranger Palooza t-shirts. If you look down here in YouTube, there's a store down there. You can check out the store, get this and other designs. And from Lola and myself, who did all the work designing this, uh, thanks very much. See you on the next one. So what's, what's different? What are you guys doing that's uh, new and different this year? So this year, we're really highlighting our X-Series. Mm -hmm. um, we did reveal it last summer, but this summer, we're actually in production. Um, we built an X-Series. This is our MH1. We're calling it our flagship build because it is big and uh, it's expensive too, but it has mm -hmm. all these really cool features. Okay. Um, just to highlight, you know, the top level features that are in all our X-Series, which you can add to any of our models, including the MH1, which mm -hmm. is our biggest model. Um, mm -hmm. It's going to be the biggest battery available in any production RV. Mm -hmm. um, the full one is over uh, 2,000 amp hours at 12 volts, 26 kilowatt hours, if you prefer that kind of mm -hmm. terminology. So 2,000 amp hours mm -hmm. in this van. Yeah, the whole floor. So it's it's built uh, as a layer okay. of the floor, and right. that's how we do it without that battery pack taking over the whole yeah. RV. Basically, it takes almost no space inside the RV. That's the big thing. So we shouldn't just like brush over that. This is not like a bunch of batteries stacked up somewhere. It takes almost no space. So this entire floor here is designed and engineered and has the batteries in it. Yep, one inch layer of batteries in it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's so, a big deal. And so it's about the size of two mm -hmm. Tesla Powerwalls. It's twice okay. as big as anything else I know in the RV market, over twice as big. Right. And then to go with that, um, we built in conjunction at the same time, is all high efficiency DC heating and cooling. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about it, but we have heated floors, heated seats. We actually have five what we call micro furnaces throughout the cabin, mm -hmm. um, just really allowing us to optimize uh, the delivery of the heating and then all 12 volt AC for that high efficiency. Oh, okay. So we can actually run our 12 volt AC for weeks. On the, so the that cabin. AC is one unit or it's a unit somewhere and it's getting, well, obviously we'll yeah, see we'll, when we go we'll in We'll see there. when we go in. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a, a single 12 volt unit right now in the back over right. the bed. Okay, yeah. so before we go in on the outside here, this is a Ford, right? Yep, Ford We're looking Transit. At Transit. Is it just Transit you're doing this on or are you doing it on Sprinter? What's... So we built three models and we uh -huh. only build on the Ford Transit. Only build on the Transit, so there you go. And then what features can you you know, can people still customize this and all that? Yeah. Everything that we went over last year, right? Yeah, so okay. uh, we have a lot more options than, mm -hmm. than we talked about last year, but mm -hmm. the core uh, three models are the same. We offer a mm -hmm. low roof, it's mm -hmm. called our CV1. Mm -hmm. uh, we offer a medium roof, we call our CV1M. Mm -hmm. The CV1 and CV1M, they're very similar. One's just medium roof height mm -hmm. chassis um, and a low roof chassis. Mm -hmm. And then we offer our flagship, our biggest model on the high roof transit, that's our MH1. Okay. And then all those are available in our X series, which last year we were talking about the X series. This year we're actually delivering to, to customers. And yes. Yeah. Showing them off yeah. at shows. So if so, cause I know people are going to ask me, well, why is it you're not doing stuff with Sprinter? Or ProMaster. If it was me, I would only build on the Ford myself. To be honest with you. Yeah. So we, we I just actually, love yeah with the, the supply chains yeah. and all that kind of stuff. We yeah. talk about it all the mm -hmm. time. I mean, I selected the Transit originally because mm -hmm. I built my own van and mm -hmm. I just researched them and I was like, oh, clearly the Ford Transit with the EcoBoost engine was head and shoulders above <laughs> everything else. Yeah. And then since that time, the Transit's only gotten better and better. Right. Um, it has the biggest color touchscreen. Mm -hmm. It has the best all-wheel drive system. Most power. <laughs> the most power by far. Yeah. Um, Easiest to service. <laughs> and just better reliability. I mean, yes. I feel really bad for the people that have the Sprinters and right. literally I just pulled up Facebook today, the mm -hmm. first post on one of the forums that I follow is a guy bought his $200,000 Class B RV, 
2,000 miles on it, so it's probably on its first trip. Mm -hmm. New engine, Mercedes, yeah. That's crazy. Boom. I'm, I'm just, on 37,000 miles, man. And yeah, it's no just, problems. yeah, I mean, knock yeah. on wood or whatever we yeah. got to knock on, the trans has <laughs> right been here. very good to us. Here's the wood. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, the yeah. trans has been very good it to is. us. And in contrast, I just see nightmares over there. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a better van. So, um, so that's kind of there. Okay. When, when I think about do I want to build on the, the Sprinter, I, I do know it's the more popular mm -hmm. with the supply chain. It, I think this, the Transit's going to win out eventually, but you know it takes a while for people to really yeah. get it. You know, Sprinter built a lot of momentum, right? But at the same time, I I just want to build the I best mean, vehicle, and I'm like, for, what would I build for myself? You yeah, know? it's like I think people I don't build it myself a Sprinter right now. Absolutely, I think folks don't realize that Ford has been building the Transit longer. The Mercedes has been bu building the Sprinter. They've been building Transit since the 50s. Yeah, in the Europe for sure. Yeah. yeah. So they've been doing this for a long time. It's just it just showed up here a few years ago. 2015. Yeah. yeah. So they've been doing it for a long time. They did a really good job. And even when I look at what's coming out new with uh, Mercedes and then the Promaster, they're cool. They, they're, they're doing some cool stuff, but it really won't match up. Yeah, yeah. To, the, to what you've the got. The Ford going is the best, here. and just, yes. yeah, that's why we don't do yeah. Sprinter. It's just the yeah. Ford's better. And right. It's just like, am I, I going to build a, a second tier vehicle just because it's, you know, got the name brand? And the answer right. is, you know, I look in my heart and I'm like, nope, yeah. just going to build the best. So, how's availability for you then? I mean, these are very, they are very popular. Yeah, so, so, so in 2022, Mod Vans won the Ford uh, lottery. <laughs> that's what I call it. Um, <laughs> okay, we, that's we, good. We got a lot of transits, and we okay, actually cool. have transits to build right now if somebody you goes do. on our website. Okay. And, you know, somebody considering availability you know right. some people are just like oh I want one two years from now when I retire yes. or whatever yeah. for those people they still you know can remain in the planning stage we can put in an order for them but if you want one now the best thing to do is go to our website and mm -hmm. you can actually see the availability on the chassis you can choose the chassis the oh color. you can yeah you can okay. choose the chassis and that's the way you're gonna if, if you see you'll see the date on our website mm -hmm. so for example if you build an MH1 X right now it's probably gonna be like mid February of 2023 okay and yeah that's, that's, that's not too bad that's pretty accurate too yeah. so okay but if you want to you know a different color that we don't have or whatever all bets okay. are off nobody knows are you doing all-wheel drive and rear wheel or I mean just uh, what, what? all our stock chassis are all-wheel drive only we okay. will special order a rear wheel drive for people who want okay. those. I don't know why you wouldn't uh, <laughs> yeah get all-wheel drive we, well, so we were just talking about like how financing really mm -hmm. um, you know kind of changes things yeah and everybody wants all-wheel drive and yeah. you know they're taking these finance packages and they're like oh for another three dollars a month, you know, I can get all-wheel drive. Why wouldn't I get all-wheel all drive? Even if I live in Florida and I never expect to go drive um, in snow. Yeah, I mean, I live in Florida and I have driven in snow. <laughs> yeah. But I don't use that all-wheel drive. Just driving in. I think just everyday driving. You know, oh, you that all-wheel so? drive is. Yeah. yeah, it's completely different. So my regular car is all-wheel drive car. It's just a completely different driving feeling. And then I test drive these all the time. The Sprinters and the Promasters are not the same. Yeah. And it's just when you go on the gas, you're getting everything so if you go on the if you go on the gas of a sprinter even a 4x4 it's gonna be in rear-wheel drive mm -hmm. you'll get that thing skipping back there and oh, all of that right and you just that. won't feel that you know I I notice it every time I, I go down to yeah. another thing so it's well worth it in my opinion okay so um, do we want to talk about like uh, prices before we go in I see you have a comparison here so folks are looking at this you know yeah, you yeah, can so, pause it for a second but go ahead yeah so the way our pricing uh, comparison here works is um, we have our base price which is a well featured RV so if you were comparing it to let's say um, a Solus or a Travato, mm -hmm. you'd see that you know the base model is is comparable to that, mm -hmm. but it is going to be two wheel drive. It's probably not going to have the EcoBoost. Those mm -hmm. vehicles don't have that either. Right. But it's still going to be an RV. It's still going to have a furnace. It'll have mm -hmm. a sink, a stove. You know, yes. two beds, four seats, all mm -hmm. the great things. Maybe a bathroom. <laughs> it will definitely have a bathroom. Yeah. And the MH1 is going to yeah. include our pop-up semi-drive bathroom. Right. So it's going to be a full-featured RV. And then you can add options. So most people are going to want to add probably about ten thousand dollars worth of chassis options right now. Right. It's going to include your all-wheel drive, your EcoBoost, um, you know, maybe some driver yeah. assistance like mm -hmm. adaptive cruise control, um, blindside information system. Mm -hmm. um, so, so a lot of customers, I would say most customers are adding at least ten thousand dollars worth of options. Okay. And then our stock chassis that we have right now, they're pretty loaded. So they're going to probably include even more options than that. So what's a pretty loaded van coming out around? I know obviously prices are changing, and even for you guys, yeah, I would hesitate to quote like. Okay. actual chassis price yeah. Um, yeah but they're they're definitely so the chassis that we have right now I mean this is kind of 
very short term for this mm -hmm. video. But the chassis we have right now are still 2022 chassis, which is great because yeah. our wholesale price from Ford is going up six thousand dollars per yeah. chassis right. across the board. So That's what I've heard. Yeah, from you're just not else. gonna save money yeah. by even if you wait yeah. and order one. That's why we don't cover yeah. the prices too much because just yeah. right now everything's too volatile. To, but I would say uh, most know. most customers add mm -hmm. at least ten thousand dollars worth of chassis options, mm -hmm. and then most customers add another ten thousand dollars worth of what we call mod vans options. Um, and I'll just walk you through yeah, a few let's, examples here. Mm -hmm. The awning, we don't include the awning in the base model. That's okay. just how we roll. We're building mostly to order anyway, so we give right. customers the option. To not, not everyone have wants an awning. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, wheels and tires. So this has mm -hmm. aftermarket aluminum wheels. That's a pretty big upgrade that most right. people don't get. The black steel wheels are actually really popular. Okay. Um, the larger tires, super popular. This one has a lift kit. So those are just examples of things, and and it mm -hmm. does add up pretty quick. You know, when every right. option is like I think yeah. two thousand um, dollars. But they're great upgrades, and I'll just give you some examples. So mm -hmm. um, I was really skeptical of the awning at first, but this self-supporting awning is so easy to deploy. I love the LED strip. This would, one is a Dometic. How's this been I, dealing I with the wind out here? Uh, so it does fine. They're, mm -hmm. they're pretty stable. Um, the, part of the trick is to keep them in a little bit, but we always oh. buy them with the wind sensor, so they self-retract if it, if it flops around too much. So okay. you actually see this one's a little more sensitive, and it'll go back in and out yeah. all day. We're like, yeah, oh, mine on my van, out. I had to uh, put it in, <laughs> yeah. but I went all the way out. So you're saying the trick is don't put it all if, the way out. If you out have a little closer in, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it'll help it's not as sensitive. Boom, I learned something already. And so for the shows, also we'll kind of leave like this you know really tall people won't hit their mm -hmm. head obviously this one's pretty high up there right now oh okay um yeah the power step is really nice especially once you get into the lift kits and the larger tires oh is this you know. is this a power step yeah, here so okay cool we have this little step here for you know for the yeah. shows but that's the power step yeah that retract and deploy. so okay. anyway i'm just giving you an example of how you yeah. know it's pretty easy to add another right. 10 or even 50, yeah i think those are all mods you're yeah. mentioning that i'm like yes i would yeah. do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. so then on you're top gonna do that, wind up doing it anyway on top of mm -hmm. that so we have the 130 base price for the mh1 but on top of that that we have our X series, which adds mm -hmm. the base X with the standard battery does mm -hmm. add about thirty thousand dollars onto the bill. Okay. People are like, why is it so expensive? Because the batteries are expensive. It is a giant battery, and mm -hmm. literally those batteries they have to come, you know, a long ways. They come in containers and we build them into things. Okay. So, so it is an expensive. So what we're looking at here, and I'm going to try to get. I don't know. Do you guys have some graphics you could show me of how the batteries yeah, constructed? I have some videos and pictures that I'll share with you guys. Yeah. So we'll roll that in. Now you guys designed and you engineered this battery. Are you assembling it here? What's mm -hmm. the yeah, so we buy on? cells from one of the three large manufacturers of lithium iron phosphate cells. They're UL listed cells. Mm -hmm. Very nice cells. Mm -hmm. uh, very rigorously tested by their manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And then we assemble them into our battery packs. We have okay. modules. Um, we make bus bars. We tie them all together. We have all these monitoring wires that go down in there. Mm -hmm. And then we have a custom management system that actually monitor, monitors and controls everything in the RV. So it's mm -hmm. going to control those furnaces that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. It controls the water system. It controls everything. But it also has has the battery management system built into it so it's a okay. unified system mm -hmm. with a single app to monitor and control everything so we're pretty excited about that because it it kind of gives us a, a couple things um, a normal battery is only monitored like at the total pack level mm -hmm. so if it's a 12 volt pack um, like these are 12 volt packs. Normally the, the charging systems are all looking at that 12 volts. Um, because we built it ourselves, we can look at that 3.2 level individual cell level mm -hmm. and we can tell, oh, is this cell at its maximum charge or is mm -hmm. it at minimum charge? And then we can do the BMS things based on the cell level instead of the whole pack level. And uh, we believe that that's gonna actually greatly enhance battery life over time. And I'm just gonna give you an example is, if I'm looking at all those cells added together and I'm saying, oh, we have to stop the battery charger at 14 Point five volts, right? Mm -hmm. There could be one of those cells that's way ahead of the others. That actually mm -hmm. happens really regularly with these high-powered charging mm -hmm. systems, you know, a second alternator and all this. Mm -hmm. It all sounds great, but when you're actually looking at the cell level, it's very common for one of those groups to get way ahead of the others. Yeah. And what we want to do is we want to turn the battery charger off when that group gets to the maximum, because otherwise you're pushing it beyond the, man the cell manufacturer's ratings, right? Mm -hmm. And you're basically you're decreasing the, the life of that, that cell or the cells in that group. Right. And so what we do is we turn it off. You're like, oh no, the battery's not charging all the way. Way. but that's actually okay so what we turn it off and then we give a chance so there's a thing called a balancer every battery has them Tesla's have them and it allows those those cell groups to balance the charge between mm -hmm. the highs and lows they just can't keep up with the big high power charging system trust okay. me I, I I've studied uh, balancers <laughs> a lot and I bought the biggest one and we right. put four of them on our big battery so right. we okay. put a lot of them on there but they cannot keep up with either the discharging just charging so we just have to turn off the charger for a little while let, oh, okay. let them level out and then they'll turn so back the on. consumer will see that but they don't really have to worry about all that stuff it's all automatic 
automatic. You guys yeah. wrote the yeah. software it's for this? It's all automatic, or? and we won't even know if it works for 20 or 30 years when, <laughs> the, when, the, when the Apache. So what's the yeah. warranty on all? But If you get this, what kind of warranty are you getting so, on this battery? Yeah, so we offer just a standard one-year warranty. We don't okay. offer anything special. Mm -hmm. um, one of the cool things about this battery pack, though, is because mm -hmm. it's made of 120 cells, which sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you start comparing it to a Tesla size battery, mm -hmm. um, the Tesla batteries are actually made out of 4,000 cells, and mm -hmm. they're all welded together. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very difficult to service. Right. Um, and it's built into the car, too. Oh, okay. So in this thing, our conversion is still modular. You can actually take all the components oh, okay. out. It does take our techs, like, let's say, you know, an hour to t pull everything right. out. But then the floor is completely exposed. We mm -hmm. can open that clamshell. And then in theory, anyway, and we haven't had to test it yet, but you could actually uh, pull the whole battery apart because the, the bus bars are um, bolted on, not mm -hmm. welded on. Pull the bus pairs off and then actually test the individual cells. Uh, and then if there's like three bad cells, you could test them. Say, oh, these them. aren't working. You replace those three bad cells and then hopefully you're good for oh, okay. another rest. So, so anyway, theoretically, yeah. you could even upgrade here as like technology changes. Maybe, yeah. That would be interesting. But that Maybe. would be a bigger yeah. deal yeah, to do. But it is serviceable in terms of, of you could take everything out and pull that yeah, out. Yeah, in theory, it's serviceable. Modular. Yeah. And I think the upgrade so scenario does somewhat apply because of the modular conversion. So that's, you know, there's these things about the modules. Like we have customers that bought their vans uh, in our beginning like almost yeah four years ago now mm -hmm. and they're like oh we love your new seating system can we get that and the answer is yes because mm -hmm. we can actually take their whole conversion out mm -hmm. and then we do have to install some new stuff to, to, to make but you you're know, not doing everything on. but yeah we're not rebuilding everything they get to keep their furnace yeah. they get to keep their AC yeah I, mean, I don't yeah. have to buy a whole other van down the road which is kind of radical yeah. if you think about it you it's know, awesome can, can you go into a Travato and then just like totally put in a whole new 2,000 amp hour battery uh, or a new seating yeah. system, yeah. system not without ripping Right. everything out and yes the like, oh well you, need, you might as well get a new furnace at this right point, right so that modular thing has always been kind of at first it was kind of theoretical as mm -hmm. far as the ability to upgrade or even change mm -hmm. uh, based on the customer's requirements um, actually you know another scenario that's coming up is we have uh, customers that are selling their vans because their life changed mm -hmm. or maybe even they just want to upgrade to the new mod van which mm -hmm. does happen mm -hmm. and then the customer that's buying it will actually call us and they're like hey can we get those new seats <laughs> exactly and we do actually do that and yeah. you know even though it might not be a huge money maker for us we do that because Mm -hmm. That's kind of part of the long-term game of mod vans is you're joining our family. Right. Uh, we want to take care of you and we want to preserve the value that you bought, you know, four years ago right. by helping appeal to this customer who is like looking at the pictures of the new seats online yeah. and they're like, oh, I want those, not the seats that it came with. Yeah. That's okay. We'll, yeah. we'll with these vans, they're not going to a next generation that often. Yeah. So, you know, you don't really, it's not like with cars, like, hey, you, if you really yeah, want to get a feel, new one You'll feel like you're really years. messed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So cool. Let's jump in here and, and actually take a look at some of these things. Come on. You want me to go first, Lola? Yep, go ahead. So I think you were saying that uh, these seats are heated now. I see perforations. Yep, all the okay. seats are heated. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we kind of go back. All the, you know, actually it was pretty cool that um, Lola was the one who called it out in your mm -hmm. last video. She's like, yeah, they're modular. You can get whatever you want. Right. And that is the case. So you can have <laughs> yeah. uh, up to In the last video, I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you something. In the last video, right, mm -hmm. when we were actually here talking, I didn't realize everything you guys were saying. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I don't know if you really... Yeah, so no, when no, I make I, these yeah. videos, I make it for me. Because when I... So when I came to edit that video... I liked what you guys did. I thought, I thought... I told Lola, this is amazing. But when I actually looked back at it, I was like, wow. Yeah, I yeah. miss that. I miss that they're doing this thing. So. No, that, that's normal. So we have, yeah. we have people that come back. Mm -hmm. Nope. They might come back all three days of the show, right? And they'll just come back with more and more questions, right? Because what we said the first day is just sinking in, yeah. And also they're trying to talk themselves yeah. into buying it, and they'll come back the next day well, and they'll have more questions. The third day they just kind of walk around like, oh, yeah. And yeah. that's okay. That's fun. It's easy for, for us, a lot yeah. of the yeah. stuff to go over your head. Uh, this is on a new chassis, right? For yep. anyone this who's is wondering, the, this yeah. This is, a new is the 2022, transit. and mm -hmm. I would say the 2022 Transit and 2023 are very similar. You okay. have the same size touch screen. Mm -hmm. There's no really big upgrades to the electronics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's going to be down to paint colors and stuff like that for different. Okay. In and then, so since the since the 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 floor has gone up a little bit, what mm -hmm. kind of difference does it, does it make? A, yeah, it does make a okay. difference, and that's mm -hmm. actually uh, that's a this this is our demo van. Okay. And we actually specifically only put the 1,000 amp hours in this battery, mm -hmm. just so customers could kind of get an idea of how that works. Okay. So in the MH1, um, this height right here is six foot four. We have a mm -hmm. A video where we show everybody all the measurements mm -hmm. of the beds and all that stuff mm -hmm. and that's actually really tall for a b-van i mean I mm -hmm. you know you, you, you kind of 
probably fall on them. And yeah. if we lose an inch, it turns out that half of Colorado <laughs> can't fit in it. Right. <laughs> you know, hit their head. So, yes, so, yes. so we decided specifically okay. with the MH1 to offer mm -hmm. the option of only getting half the battery so oh, that you could okay. keep that extra one inch. And, and uh, maybe Lola can jump in yeah. here later, but Lola, you can actually see that one inch right there by the refrigerator. Oh, okay. So you're, yep. so uh, see the lip right there by the fridge? You want to go up to that? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, I see. So otherwise the battery, the 2000 yeah, comes up to here. Yeah, otherwise it would come out in a continuous... So, Right, like I would be yeah. getting the 2000, so I'd be standing, you know, I'd be a little closer to yep, this, but look, one inch closer. for me, I'm, uh, I don't know. That I, I much think, closer. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm like 5'11", so I would still be good, but you're right. Yeah. There are guys who wouldn't necessarily. They're literally 6'4". The, There's yeah. so many people that are 6'4". The beauty of these vans, <laughs> I mean, you could just stand straight up in them, you know. The 2000, yeah. you, you lose yeah. the inch you know, yeah. on both sides, yeah. and the 1000, you only lose the inch in the back, but it turns out it's not a big of a deal. It's in the garage, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we actually raised the bed another inch to make sure you can still get your 29 inch mountain bikes back there. Oh, okay. So you lose a, an inch of clearance between the bed and the ceiling. Okay, what's <clears throat> new up front? So it's still the same modular seating system. You can have mm -hmm. up to seven seats total, five in this area. This cabinet comes out. There's only a, a four bolts that hold it in. It's actually really quick. I've done it several times. Okay. Back in. And then um, and then two seats go here. We can put a third row seat in here. Okay. All these second and third row, actually the first row seats, they all swivel and slide. And then the X-Series, the seats are heated. Um, mm -hmm. This floor is actually really cool. So whether it's, uh, you know, the, the full battery or the half battery, mm -hmm. um, it's heated, so there's actually a bunch of 12 volt heating pads under this floor, um, and you can see the bolts. It's all an integrated flooring system. And then this floor, this is a new flooring for us. This is X Series exclusive flooring, and that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. It's a yeah. CNC cut by our um, by our vendor for us, and uh, it, it very feels like it's got some traction. In it's it. got this really interesting texture, and then the question is like, how does it clean? And so far, I mean. Mm -hmm. You can see a little debris from the show, but mm -hmm. we've actually already had it like several shows and people are tracking right. dirt and mud and it. it's it's holding up really well. So we got a really good demo for the vendor, you know, where he sprays ketchup on it, cleans it off. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's okay. pretty cool. The, the finishes aren't really my specialty. I'm a tech mm -hmm. guy, but right, right. I do think it's it's just fun. You want it to be yeah. utilitarian and, you know. But fun you at the to, same time, yeah. 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 And, and we're not, again. I like the splash of color. Yeah. I think that's a big deal in these vans. It gets real. I like, I like the fact that, you know, we've got this interior, but when you're spending if you have to spend a lot of time in there it gets a little sure, boring yeah. and it's yeah. cool to have splashes of color so, yeah place. and we have a few different you know this mm. is not you know a totally gray um, yeah. cabinet so um, when you go on the website you can actually see that there'll be choices for the flooring there'll be choices for the wall finishing okay and also for the countertops okay so, so what are we looking at here I think Lola was pointing out that you've got a screen here I'll yeah sit down. so this is more um, you know this screen right here is more uh, really for those passengers that are looking to replace like a minivan or mm -hmm. a really passenger ca or a like Cadillac a, SUV yeah, and they got their yeah. kids back here and yeah. everybody needs to watch a movie so that mm -hmm. they can you know have a little silence right yes we had one of those <laughs> conversion vans yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and so um you know like we do in all mod van things we really kind of studied the market and mm -hmm. we picked this particular panel I really didn't want something that was hanging on an arm just because mm -hmm. they tend to vibrate around and right. fall. Okay. And I just wanted it to be super easy, HDMI inputs, you know, oh, okay. and that's it. It actually shuts itself off when you close so, it. So does this connect to like, a, you know, like an Apple TV? Or, it can, or so okay. it has an HDMI input and mm -hmm. actually right there, that's actually my Raspberry Pi that's running that. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah, cool. it's running that video. Oh, just so for, you're running everything off the Yeah, Raspberry just for Pi. fun, okay, nice. yeah. I mean, just for yeah. the show, you know, but there's yeah. just an HDMI jack there. Mm -hmm. You can plug a fire stick right here. I would say the, oh, fire, the fire stick is probably the simple solution. But um, but yeah, Apple TV. Is this where the HDMI is coming out? Yep, that's oh well, cool. That's where it's going. All right, so here, Lola, you might want to show the uh, this panel over here, because I, I I think you were telling me we did see you guys at uh, Flagstaff, and you were telling me that there's not that many switches uh, anymore. Well, in this model, yeah, there's in, not. In this model, the right. only switches we have are what we call virtual switches. They're okay. just suggestions of the computer about. You know, the user flipped on a switch. So those switches right. up on the rear view mirror, for example. Okay. Those are physical switches, but they don't oh, actually okay, right do here. anything. They, oh, okay. They're just in the computer giving it a hint that something, that the user wants to turn on switch number one. Okay. So they're actually all reprogrammable. So right oh. now, um, I don't think I have them programmed to anything, but I can tell. But you can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you're driving and let's say the lights, you forgot the lights were on, yeah, yeah. you could program yeah. it we to take off a, the we, lights. We could even have a master switch that's like all lights or just oh, individual cool. lights. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cool. So they're programmable, which is, yeah. 
you know, there's a lot of things that are going to come from having this computerized monitoring and control mm -hmm. system that we haven't figured out yet. But right. we're still in the processes of, because we just built it. So we're okay. like, okay, what cool things can we do? And that's a great scenario that I hadn't yeah. thought about. How, how are you guys updating that? Like, do folks have to come back in? How can they, like, if you... Yeah, so everything's over the wire updates. Okay. So the actual um, transit uh, in starting in 2022 comes with mm -hmm. a Wi-Fi hotspot. So mm -hmm. when it's delivered to you, it actually already has an internet connection. Okay. And then our system connects to that internet connection. Mm -hmm. So, and we can tell it, hey, you know, it's time to update Hank's van mm -hmm. and it will actually send you a, an update over the wire. We have three circuit boards. Um, mm -hmm. They're custom made for mod vans. We design them in house and okay. they're, they're, each one has its own firmware. Mm -hmm. And then there's cloud servers, there's an app. We wrote all the software for that. And so we, we mm -hmm. want to push an update. Um, that's technical term for sending the updates right, to right. certain <laughs> specific customers. Okay. Um, when we want to push an update, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we literally have a, a, an app that we can go in and say, yeah, Hank's agreed to, <laughs> to demo out this new software for us, right. send it to him and it'll, it up. <laughs> it'll automatically uh, yeah. uh, upgrade the firmware on all your devices, reboot everything. Oh, and then cool. you run the new firmware. If we made a really bad mistake, then we can say, go back to the old <laughs> firmware. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and if it's terrible enough, then there is a way to, to do it manually to without okay. over the air. But our, okay. our goal for the software, and we, we have some really skill, I mean, my background is software development. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty good we haven't bricked anything yet knock, knock on wood again that's what they call it when right. you send an update they, right. <laughs> that's the last update it ever gets right exactly. so, uh, so so we've been pretty good about that yeah. that's our goal is to never, send, it yeah, never <laughs> to send a brick but uh, but um, yeah but if we do there is a way to you know open up the panels and, and oh, okay and swap out the firmware would so. this be the yeah so, th so this is the tablet that we delivered this is just a, a normal off-the-shelf tablet running our software you can actually pull it up and open the internet or whatever and then really the goal is that you could put it on all your mobile devices so mm -hmm. if you have an android and iphone app this is an android tablet but it could mm -hmm. be an iphone oh it could but, be yeah and this okay. is just the one that we give you so you know mm -hmm. if you want to swap this out with a, a tablet or if you want to have five tablets in here okay or if you want to have no tablets and only do it on your oh. phone those are all okay oh okay and what i would just say about the the app right now is mm -hmm. it's just it, it was designed just to be super basic for right now you know mm -hmm. it, we just want it to work and be functional so um, if we go back in and we'll just look at the lights, you know, it's not fancy. Oh, you I can see. Just turn things on and yeah. off and set the okay. LED limit. All right. Um, you don't have like a you know a graphic UI yeah. yet. The really. The next version will be okay. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but so for right now we're really mm -hmm. concentrating on functionality, the mm -hmm. core BMS functions. Okay. And then how much of that information do we show to you, the end user? Right. I want to see my van spinning. In here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. You know. <laughs> and then you know like how much? What is? What are we doing for the for the technicians? You know what right. kind of data do they okay. put in there because this okay. is the same app that we're using in-house okay where the guys are configuring the system and saying mm -hmm. yeah this is it was built with two batteries and mm -hmm. you know here are the temperature sensors. how many of these do you have out already like have customers so taken that, delivery yes yeah, so so of, of the mh1 um mm -hmm. this is number three and then oh, okay. the x series this is literally number two so yeah we're super oh, okay. early in, 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 in that so process. this is a mh1 x correct okay yeah and then All the right. other one that was delivered was a cv1 x okay we have a pretty long involved <laughs> way too long and involved video that oh okay <laughs> that was a fun build though it okay. crazy off-road lights giant bumpers. Uh, so it was an x plus all the crazy off really like the guy was just like do whatever you want oh and so we we did whatever right. we wanted <laughs> we put some crazy, i need to see that yeah yeah it, <laughs> yeah it was funny because uh all that stuff weighs a lot so when mm -hmm. you finally finished the build it was like right at the gvrw or whatever so we were really? like oh, man. yeah because right. i mean you just put on 500 pounds off-road lights guess right what? yeah that's they true 500 you pounds. Be, yeah you have to think yeah, about we that. put on a i think it was a 60 inch curved light bar on the pop-up top <laughs> we wow. had to put special motors on the pop-up top so it would go up so and it could down. go up oh yeah oh. with all these it had lights all the way around it right it's okay. awesome but yeah uh, but yeah maybe overkill but you know <laughs> that's the way you got to do it if you're going to kill it you got to overkill it <laughs> <laughs> so um last year we showed you our propane kitchen which has a three burner propane stove and an oven mm -hmm. combined together all propane mm -hmm. this is what we call our electric kitchen it's the only option on the x series because we don't have any propane on board okay and um you know just walking through it we use these vans so mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of choices that really come from us like you know how do we use it and you know what's annoying to us mm -hmm. so for example i'm really uh, adamant about having a two burner stove that i can actually cook on both burners with a real pot you know mm -hmm. not these little two fake burners that are jammed close together right yeah and then you know going back to the electrical system i actually want to be able to use both burners at the same time you know mm -hmm. and then it's an induction stove so it draws a lot of power so we okay. have have a big inverter that can actually run both how of big these. is the inverter the inverter is three thousand watts okay. which isn't crazy big as far as they go but one of the really cool things about having 12 volt heating and cooling is mm -hmm. you can run your ac and still have three thousand watts 
totally available for your mm -hmm. cooking because guess what? Your AC is um, going off the 12 right, volt. So everything in here is 12 volt. All the heating and cooling is 12 volt. All the heating so and cooling. So I wish I could get this, a 12 volt not, induction not, stove, yeah, but that, it's, it's not yeah. available. I'll yes. be building my stoves in about two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A refrigerator's next on my list. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I will build a stove eventually. Okay. I think. So, and this is a, our oven. It's actually a mm -hmm. oven, convection oven, okay, that's microwave. Nice. Yeah. Uh, air toaster fryer. oven and air fryer. Yes, yeah. yeah, it has sweet. all these crazy accessories yeah. in it. It's actually a really nice unit. It's a little bigger than oh, like, like kind that of our, spinning tray, our mm -hmm. mini microwave. Yeah, and it actually works really well. So. Yeah, I mean to me that's as far as I need to go. Like I know you guys had an oven, <laughs> so that was obviously JT's. He's French, so he has an oven and no AC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this one has AC. Yeah, I'm the tech guy, so I got the <laughs> electric kitchen and the 12 volt yeah, AC. I'm with you, man. I'm yeah. with you. So, um, right. you know, coming back to, you know, we use these things a lot. We really wanted this super deep kitchen. As you can see, I'm making all kinds of crazy use of it with my um, little fancy water pot, my Nespresso coffee maker. Nice. Um, you know, all kinds of space up here just to put things, cutting mm -hmm. space here, um, my super deep sink. Um, we cutting do, board. Yeah, we do have the cutting board that goes over his when we're driving. So you can actually use it to cut. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then the high high sink, the soap dispenser. So all these little knickknacks with the big sink and stuff are just things that we kind of discovered through our own use that were really important to us. Right. I want a deep sink because otherwise it splashes all over your bed. You know, it splashes all over these little bitty bowls that, mm -hmm. yeah. And the high thing for filling pots. You can actually put this over here when you get your pot, fill right. it up and boil some noodles. Mm -hmm. And the soap dispenser, especially during COVID, you're just like washing your hands nonstop. Mm -hmm. And we just found like, instead of digging my soap bottle out of yeah, the same, it's, sink, convenient. Yeah. Even, it's yeah. so convenient. Yeah. And like you fill it up once for last I'm always for, hunting yeah, for the months. one hour van. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's always in a. <laughs> yeah. Well, now you know. And actually you can probably put one in your van pretty easily. So oh, okay. you just pretty much drill a hole. Yeah. And, and then, then put it yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. And then it screws in from both yeah. sides. And then no. from then on, you just fill it from the top. So. It's, yeah, it's, it, it, you think that's a thing that you, that's you know something you're not going to use, but it, it really is. And I, you know, I don't know how close you got here, Lola, but I do really like that you've got your, you know, you've got your kettle um, here, and you've got everything bolt. This so now this is you, right? This is yeah. not how the van comes, but that's you can correct. do it, yeah, right? You yeah. can bolt These things, are things in like yeah. this. Yeah, I might. Okay. If you if you're real nice and you buy a two hundred thousand dollar van, I'll throw in a bracket. Oh, okay. I'll throw in the we'll, Nespresso bracket. Okay, we'll negotiate after <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this actually comes with the MH1. This is okay. our kitchen organizer. Sweet. Again, this is coming from actually using the van. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, I want storage over there," but what? You, I mean, just look at it right here. If I have storage, it's mm -hmm. coming into my face, and I'm mm -hmm. trying to wash dishes. You know, mm -hmm. what's happening here? This is mm -hmm. not very fun, right? Yeah. And so, and then also, I noticed, you know, always with the with the plates and stuff, they're really annoying when they're in your your drawers and stuff. They just don't fit in anything. So we were kind of like, "What if we kind of turn this problem into something that's good?" Mm -hmm. And we made this organizer. It's nice and shallow. I never mm -hmm. feel like they're in my face, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it holds all my stuff perfectly. Yeah. And these are the things that I need. Every morning I grab these, right? Yeah. You know, every lunchtime I grab these. Yeah. My paper towels are right. Yeah, this here. is a this yeah. is a interesting way of doing the paper towel, I think. Yeah. I like this, man. You yeah. Know, so the I can only get this on a mod van, I'm guessing. <laughs> That's I right, yeah. I can't get that and put it in my van. So here's the here's the story is <laughs> mod vans we're we're just crazy. We you know, you were mm -hmm. talking about those guys, they're like, Oh, that's too hard or whatever. Mm -hmm. We our process is we think of something, we kind of put it through a vetting process. Customers have mm -hmm. asked us for we have a process where we choose what's the most important right. thing to work on. And then when we do, when it comes out of that, we're like, okay, can we buy it? If we can buy it and it, it's an RV part, we'll just buy it. That's not a problem. We, it's not like we're anti-buying things. Mm -hmm. But if we can't buy it, that doesn't mean that we're not going to, not going to do it. It's yeah. going to be like, well, can we do it? Is it yeah. possible? At the time when we were doing this, um, we had somewhat mastered what we call textile products. We were mm -hmm. in the process of designing our own window shades because mm -hmm. we couldn't get anything we really loved out of the window shades. Right. And so, and you can actually see the materials are kind of the same. Okay. So, so we've, we've gotten into the textile okay, business like what, now. Yeah. And, uh, and so as a result of that, we, we decided to go ahead and, yeah. and make the organizer. So anyway, this is a lot of ways of saying is, you know, we have these ideas and then, you know, yeah. we, we just like, okay, look in the we'll defense, in the defense of the big guys, they can't do it because they're dealing, I guess, with a bigger, wider audience that they're trying to please. Maybe. Right. This is what they say. This is what they say. This is what yeah. they tell me. That sounds like excuses to me. Yeah. Right? yeah. I mean, I'm like, okay. You know, the, uh, I, I go to these shows, so I see there's a big audience for this. We're thing. not having any customers that say they don't want yeah. the organizer. Well, you know what? <laughs> when this is what I've heard from a lot of people, yeah. like that van, people tell me that van's not your first van. 
Yeah. I mean, it is your first van. It's not your yeah, last I know van. What you're saying. Yeah. It's not your yeah. last van because as you do this more, you're going to come to realize. And I agree with you. I think if the folks out there actually use these things they're building more, they would see. And even I go out there and I talk to the people buying their vans who even are older. Like a lot of times they tell me, oh, the guys who buy our vans are older and they want this or that. And then I go see them and they've modified them. Yeah, yeah. To this. So, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I'm with you guys. Bart, that's the guy's name. Yeah. <laughs> Bart the Bumper Man. He just gave to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it got me thinking because you were talking about modifying the vans, and these people literally bought a $220,000 van, and then they were running around replacing the bumpers and all the stuff that made a $220,000 van, they were swapping out because they didn't like the bumpers and they don't like the lights. Yeah. And I was just like, okay. Yeah. Yes. This is, this is like the mountain bikers, right? They yeah. buy the, the $15,000 mountain bike, and they're like, ah, no, no, no. Gotta we gotta change gotta, everything. Yeah, everything's I've gotta be changed. I've seen this in yeah. a lot of different places. Okay, cool. So to, let's go to the bed. I don't know if you guys have done anything different with the bed or not. Uh, I like the placement of your fridge. Yeah, nothing yeah. different. We did change the fridge, which I'll you know let you guys go into. We had the drawer fridge, which was cool, right? Mm -hmm. But again, we used it for over a year and we just hated it. And JT oh. has a long kind of rant about how much the oh, reasons really? he had yeah a lot of to do with cleaning it and the things oh, aren't okay. organized okay. and so we were just like okay we're not going to use that fridge anymore what can we do and so we luckily found this fridge which we really like um okay. i've been using it i'm like yeah it's as good as anything you do have to bend you know you have to contort yourself a little bit different way so the way i look at it is that um so there are things you have to figure out where you can compromise what, what are you guys using, a, a cassette style yeah, we have, or dry? Uh, we have a fairly small cassette, but we do offer a dry flush and mm -hmm. composting toilet as options. Okay, yeah. And the reason for those choices is that, you know, that keeps our modular feature. So you actually, believe it or not, can take this beast out. So it's yeah. only about, it's about 200 pounds, so it's not easy, mm -hmm. but it is still modular. And then kind of going back mm -hmm. to serviceability of the battery mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So there's some other design choices that are driving us away from mm -hmm. the Blackwater tank. But that said, I want this to be the most amazing B-Van that's ever been built so i'll come right. back and put a black water yeah. tank in just so i can check that box off eventually. right so i think yeah. what we were talking about here is that um and this whole conversation about should you have like a you know an actual plum toilet with a black tank in it or cassette style and i think for some people it comes down to like i have crone so it you know all right i'm gonna use that it's, a it's lot totally how you're yeah. using it yeah, yeah. so but for me, if I want that modularity, I think as time goes on, you know, and I see like, no, I want this thing. I want to be able to do this or that. You have to figure out where you could bend there. But I think also the, I don't know if the right word is toilet technology, <laughs> but it is changing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the thing is, is there something else out there as an option that mm. you can use frequently? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I will definitely design a kick-ass Blackwater system. It's just you not, will? Yeah, it, it's just okay. not this year. Probably won't be yeah. 2022. Okay. <laughs> maybe so, 2023, how about yeah, that? Yeah, maybe for the prototype Stranger Palooza event. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, maybe we can yeah. work so, on something And, like and that. I'll say, yeah. you know, I can mm -hmm. explain the other use case, because mm -hmm. this is me, my personal use case, mm -hmm. is I don't have an RV dump station at home, and my trips almost never involve places that have RV dump stations. Oh, I see. So yeah. when I had a Class C RV, what would happen is um, I knew to stop at the RV dump station. Mm -hmm. There's actually in California, there's some rest stops that have mm -hmm. RV dump stations. Yes, and, which is and awesome. the last one is like yeah. 50 miles or further from my house. That's probably <laughs> right. like 70 miles from my house. Right. But I knew to stop there. And then mm -hmm. I knew to tell my family, no bathroom use and you know, right. until you get home, just tell me I'll pull yeah. over and we'll go. Yeah, we, so, but, but invariably I loaned that vehicle to my friends because that was part of owning it for me was mm -hmm. being able to share it with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I gave them a big long list and that included like, don't bring with the black water. <laughs> and no one, no one. <laughs> they always it. brought it home with the black water tank full. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, well now yeah. what? Because there's not an RV place yeah. that's anywhere near my house when yeah. I lived in Berkeley. So anyway, so it was it a lot of, of the yeah. overlanders. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. I've noticed a lot of the overlanders, which let's be honest about this. The overlanding people use their vans more, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Could be yeah. on average. Yeah. So a lot of them don't need that. They're fine. Yeah, for, yeah. Probably for your reasons and all that. Yeah. Like for us living in Florida, we have a septic, so we do have a clean out drain. It's go. easy yeah. enough to access. And uh, nothing is perfect for, there's no one thing that's perfect for everyone. That, that's what I would say. Is, yeah. yeah. That, that's all, and I know because I sell three toilet options already and it right. doesn't cover them out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And what are the three options? The composting toilet, dry flush, and then the standard toilet is uh, the cartridge toilet. We looked at the fridge here, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the bed is pretty much the same thing. What I did want to talk about, so you still have the bump outs, right? Yeah, there's just only one bump, bump out here. on the driver's side. Oh, it's only on this side. Yeah. Okay. 
So this particular one just has it on the driver's side. Yeah. Well, so that's just our thing. We put, okay. we built one big bump out instead of trying to build. Two oh small right. Bump okay. Outs. So yeah. it's always just one bump yep, out yep, on yep. the driver's side. And it side. gives you that full queen size bed and right. then the full factory type windows there mm -hmm. with the half opening slider in the back and mm -hmm. then the deeper counter. So okay. It gave us kind of all those things. Right. Makes sense. And then obviously, if anyone, if you guys haven't seen the previous video I did with Mod Vans, they've got these really cool. Uh, what do you call these? Baskets, cabinets We call them soft-sided storage lockers. It's, okay, it's, there you go. I literally just looked up the term today. <laughs> right. So, uh, I know they get dinged for not looking like finished furniture. Right. But honestly, you're going to mm -hmm. see, we are going to win this battle. These yeah. are so much better than anything else out in the market. We're, right. We're and they're win. removable. They're removable, but... Right. And they're flexible. When you hit your head, it doesn't hurt. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or at least it right. Hurt you're right. Place. It doesn't hurt. It's um, also very flexible. It doesn't hog up as much space. So mm -hmm. if you have hard-sided cabinets, what you'll notice is, mm -hmm. you know, it has three-quarter inch whatever it is mm -hmm. made out of on the sides, and that's right. hogging up your storage space. Right. The, the door and the mechanism takes away your storage space. These have mm -hmm. none of that. It's just thin plastic. Yeah. And they're heavy. So, yeah. um, one of the things we didn't get into, but you know, I think mm -hmm. is somewhat important, especially as we put these larger batteries. Mod Vans is building a very lightweight conversion. Our conversion mm -hmm. weighs somewhere on the order of 11 to 1300 pounds, mm -hmm. um, and that compares to a, a normal conversion. If you add it up for one of the big makers, is weighing about 3700 pounds mm -hmm. for the same features, pop up right. top or whatever. Yeah. And so that lightweight, I mean, we are solving it in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And the overhead storage is just one of those ways that we yeah. solve it. You know, aluminum parts, yeah. um, you know, this super lightweight, incredibly lightweight right. cabinetry. And some of that results in things that don't look like to match people's expectation. Mm -hmm. um, what I would ask people is like, you know, give us a chance. You know, maybe it doesn't look exactly like what you would expect. Mm -hmm but you're getting a lot in return there. You're not having to change your brakes as often. You're not having mm -hmm. to use as much gas. You know, right. the vehicle is going to drive better. It's going to yeah. drive over an off-road better because it's not so heavy it's with all these heavy. cabinets and stuff. Yes. You can put more of your gear in it, you know? Yeah. So you start looking at, you know, the total weight rating of your vehicle. How much can you actually put? Well, if your mm -hmm. conversion weighs an extra 30, you know, 2,500 pounds, guess what? That's 2,500 pounds of gear you mm -hmm. actually can't put in your vehicle and still be able to drive safely, right? Yeah. Or your kids, you know, like yeah. the, the what got me started with the weight, we had always built a lightweight because I'm just, I, I want a lightweight vehicle. I yeah, there's a, the there's a bunch of yeah. things. You're going to get better efficiency, yeah. you know. But, but the thing that triggered me was I was looking at a group. I studied these Facebook groups all the time. And the person mm -hmm. was like, hey, I just looked it up. And I only mm -hmm. have 500 pounds of occupant and cargo carrying mm -hmm. capacity. How am I going to get my kids in? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Can, that can't be right. And, right. and I looked up all the stats for that particular build. And sure enough, you know, when you added up the, you know, the occupant cargo carrying capacity for that vehicle was 500 bucks, uh, 500 pounds. Right. So I was just like, wow. Nowadays that could be it, two people. I work, well, yeah. And I worked it backwards. I'm like, oh, their conversion weighs 3,700 pounds. It was, wow. it was really blowing yeah. me away because I was like, there's no way yeah. I weighs that much. I think, look, we could, the same conversation with uh, bathrooms, cabinets, we can get into it. You know, I think I get it. There's people who cabinets, I have cabinets, very nicely built cabinets, mm -hmm. but you know, the part that makes me mad is it's not modular. What if I want more cabinets or what if I want less yeah. cabinets? Every you know? single one of these are modular almost, yeah, and they're lightweight enough that you could actually drag them out. So this yes. thing right here, I mean, yeah. maybe it weighs 20 pounds because yeah. it's a skin and skeleton right. construction. And you know so, what's funny between yeah. last year and this year, I've looked at a lot of vans. I think it was Airstream hat was using those kinds of, <laughs> those was, kinds of, it was, uh, it was the yeah, <laughs> so. It's possible they're watching some mod bands yeah. <laughs> and the Stranger Palooza videos. Yeah, I think you're right on that one. If, if people in the chat or in the comments are having that argument, I would go, I would side with what you're saying. I think if you're really going to use it and get out there and do a lot of things with your van, you're going to like that flexibility because you're not going to get it with hard, solid cabinets necessarily so and they just weigh more so yes. that's you know they, yeah. they, they don't add any value for that extra mm -hmm. weight so for example um, the way we tested these and the anchoring system is I threw my big toolbox that would probably weighs about 50 pounds mm -hmm. and we took it off-roading and see will they rip off will the mm -hmm. bottoms fall out and the answer is no okay I actually love the pockets you can I throw yeah. my phone in there so at night I throw my phone in right. and we actually put uh, outlets in the ceiling overhead so I can mm -hmm. plug my phone in and then yeah. you know I wake up in the middle of the night where's my phone that's oh, true it's right yeah. over my head so I know there's a couple of things before we're gonna go outside but a couple of things AC we didn't cover the AC okay so is, that, is that the AC in the that's, back that's the 12 volt AC okay now that AC is in a ducting system or something yeah, in this it, roof it's or literally how is that just working? right there blowing down the bed okay just yeah, there okay yeah. 
So that's just working there. So up front here for cooling, you're just going with, with the, the chassis. What, with the chassis. And, okay. And, and I've actually used this. So again, okay. you know, this comes back to you know how to use it. What I would say is this area with that AC on full blast it actually has mm -hmm. some really nice, uh, powerful vents, unlike mm -hmm. a normal. So it, it, it has a much better air handling system than a normal uh, RV AC, mm -hmm. and so it's able to to kind of get the air coming in here. This area is actually pretty good into at least the mid 90s, maybe mm -hmm. the hundreds. You're you're feeling comfortable. It, it's maybe mm -hmm. not in the 60s, but it's definitely in the, keeping it in the 70s. Mm -hmm. If you want to go park yourself out in the middle of the Mojave in a mm -hmm. sunny day, like 120, 130, mm -hmm. it's probably going to struggle in this area. Right. Yeah. What about to, Florida that I, maybe I gets to 80, but it's very humid? I think it's going to be fine <laughs> in that environment because uh, it's really, ultimately, the air conditioners are just trying to bring it down like 10 degrees at a time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you're going to be, a, it's taking it a while to bring it down that first 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. But once it gets the air pretty dry, then it can work from that because it's recycling, recirculating that dry air. Right. So yeah. it'll take once a little it while it, yeah. to get its thing. Yeah. But I do feel like it would kind of work here it's not perfect but in the end i mean uh i'm not quite ready to build acs yet so that's coming but okay <laughs> but yeah i build my own furnaces i'll build my own acs okay. next oh okay <laughs> i noticed there's a list yeah there i'm is keeping a list. It a mental list of those things so what do you have going on here in the roof just insulation um yeah everything framework everything will be insulated top. when you pull this off we, we uh -huh. mostly use in the big cavities we use uh wool insulation okay have luck rock wool uh, no, oh, have have wool. so okay. rock wool is actually uh just really uh rock fibers that have been yeah. strung into something that looks okay. like wool. Mm -hmm. um, we actually use real you know, lambs or sheep wool. Oh, um, and that's what the Havelock yeah, is? Yeah, Havelock okay. is, a, is kind of probably the biggest brand of that. They use it okay. actually in buildings and stuff. Mm. The key is that it's treated, so mm -hmm. they actually comb it all out to get rid of all the junk. And oh, okay. then they treat it with um, several treatments, so mm -hmm. fire retardant and mm -hmm. you know antibacterial growth to make it a, a true building product. It's certified for use in homes and stuff like that. Okay. So it's basically a really high-end product. I don't know that I'm you know super sold on one kind of insulation for another it's it's great because inside the wall um mm -hmm. you'll, you're never going to be able to block out all the mm -hmm. moisture and the problem is that it the three of us we are the moisture generators mm -hmm. in the van we're breathing and exhaling mm -hmm. literally the moisture from the water that we've mm -hmm. been drinking all day mm -hmm. and so uh if you go into things like airplanes so i actually studied the moisture mm -hmm. systems of airplanes it turns out what they do is uh the ceiling on top of an airplane has all these drains. It's designed actually, and it drains into these little things, really? and it goes down into what they call a bilge, mm -hmm. and then it just exits out the bottom of the airplane as it's flying. Oh. Yeah, so the, the airplane designers are like, yeah, there's nothing we can do to, mm -hmm. to stop this. We're just gonna deal yeah. with it. And okay. so actually car uh, manufacturers kind of do the same thing. All the walls have little holes mm -hmm. that are made to drip, drip it. Mm -hmm. And if you really get serious and try to seal everything, what you're going to do is you're just going to wind up with moisture on the outside of the walls, which is not going to be good. Then your countertops and your... Right, because you know, it'll live yeah. there. Yeah, it will just be yeah. wet too. Mm -hmm. It'll be annoying and maybe mold and mildew. Oh, okay. So what you want is you want a system that is going to be able to uh, still insulate when mm -hmm. wet and then allow it to eva evaporate as quickly as possible once the conditions allow, once the dew point is, is available to, oh, okay. to allow it to get away. Okay. So, so wool works for that. Okay. And then, you know, we put it in the as much of it we can to get that R value up in the mm -hmm. cavities. But ultimately, you know, you're still building inside a vehicle. There's thin areas, there's right, windows, right. there's other things. So we do have to kind of overwhelm it sometimes. How is the, I mean, I'm just curious about this because Lola yeah, sure. and I've been dealing with it. How is the underneath of this for like creatures coming in? <laughs> Living in Florida, we're starting to go through that. You yeah, know, that, like that is actually an excellent question. Or, here's what I would say mm -hmm. is we don't do anything really that, um, we cut a lot of holes in the van. Mm -hmm. We seal all our holes. So okay. we fill it with this insulation, but that doesn't mean that when you buy the van from Ford, that there's not plenty of entry mm -hmm. points that it came with from the factory and mm -hmm. we don't go. Cause it's a different purpose for, for them when they're building it. Um, you know, I don't know what the, you know, the exact mm -hmm. thing is with that, but I will just say that it's a common problem everywhere. And then okay. like areas where people are having a lot of problems with creatures eating their wires and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, the owners of those vehicles are usually taking some kind of mitigation, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, traps or some mm -hmm. kind of audible device and, mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe somehow trying to seal it, you know, yeah. spraying and stuff like that. There's definitely yeah. people that are taking mitigation steps. And I would just say, like, if you live in an area where creatures are coming in, you definitely want to address it. And, yeah. you know, you can rely on mod vans not to make it worse. But, right. but I'm not saying... We're, Florida we have, is like Jurassic yeah, Park. We, have, so we haven't necessarily every, solved yeah. that problem. Yeah. yeah. So if you're... It's always yeah, a lot of creatures. Roaches, the, you know, yeah. the, the ones that with wings are in Florida, yes. right? So they fly Everything. in your van and... Yeah. <laughs> and lay Everything eggs. you can imagine. Let's talk about the bathroom sure. real quick here. Any changes on this? Obviously, this goes up and down. Yeah. Um, uh, no what's big, going on no here? real changes. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, we we have the precise measurements. So mm -hmm. um, it's six foot three inches in, mm -hmm. in sides, with I think it's probably one of the biggest, tallest mm -hmm. uh, 
showers inside, mm -hmm. um, still, you know, the semi wet bath with a toilet mm -hmm. slides in and out. Mm -hmm. um, and then we did work uh, more on the finish. So what you saw last year in film was a prototype. This mm -hmm. is actually the yeah. This has a this like is the production. Uh, actually, it's more on the inside. And oh, the, oh the last, let me take a look. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can take a look. It's just more finished surfaces, less visible fasteners. Okay, sorry, Lola. You know, better lighting, that kind of. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got a nice, uh, nice lighting in there. Very nice. Okay, you've got uh, soap dispensers and everything yeah. in there. That's really cool. Okay, and then the toilet's removed from this one, but easy enough you can it, put it back not, here. No, I'll put it behind it. Oh, it's back here. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so there's the toilet. Yeah. And uh, get it around that. Okay, there you go. So it is in there. And then um, this all comes down, yep. right? Yep. And then you can use this as a as countertop. A, as countertop and space. it is really nice. So my mm -hmm. son was, uh, he brought um, my two grandkids mm -hmm. and they spent the night in the pop up top. And, mm -hmm. and we had this and they wanted to put the bed, this down, mm -hmm. and then they use it to pile all their stuff up. Mm -hmm. And I just, it does make, it makes it feel nicer in here. And so what we discovered in using it for our own use, and this mm -hmm. is going to depend. You know, some people are buying a dedicated RV, and they're like, why would you ever put the bathroom away? Because mm -hmm. the, the bathroom is the whole reason I bought the RV. Yeah. In their case, they would just leave it up. You can drive with it. I've been driving across the country just like this. It's been like this for, oh, like, okay. for so a really long time. Oh, okay. yeah, it doesn't have yeah. to come down. Okay. Um, but for my personal use case, most of my trips, I don't use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of nice just to be able to put yeah. it away and have yeah. it not occupying so much space. For me, you know, because when I'm home and I'm not traveling, I'm using my van as my office space. I do my podcasts out of there. I do same thing yeah. when I'm on the road, but if I'm home, I don't need to use it as a bathroom Yeah, at all. so you would pull it down, you yeah, get, the I can grip, have that space get the for, lighting, the yeah. space, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then obviously here's the pop top. We mm -hmm. can show folks here, anything new going on here? Uh, nothing uh, new oh, in the oh. pop up top. I would mm -hmm. say it's, it's very similar. I mean, we have, you know, this is actually the production canvas, the tent like part. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's gray, which is what um, JT's was orange, which is just mm -hmm. kind of fun that we did on the prototype. Right. So you've got a nice uh, kind of a wraparound view up there. You yeah. can close all these things up. Yep. You've got lighting up there, as you can see there. Yeah, we actually, so, so this one is our X-Series, so it has a furnace. You can actually see the furnace vent right Oh, here. it's got a furnace vent. Dedicated okay. furnace, furnace for the pop-up top. Okay. It so, actually has a dedicated charging outlet up here too. Okay, so all these vents I'm seeing in the roof, are those speakers or? Uh, those? So this is actually the intake for the pop-up furnace. Oh, so it, it is? it pulls okay. in air here, and then it's okay. gonna blow out warm air here. Over there, yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. And so, and then is that the same that's, thing down yeah, there? Yeah, that's the intake. This is um, where it blows out the air right here. There's five of these furnaces oh, kind cool. of spread okay. around the furnace. There's another one under this seat. There's another one in the kitchen. Okay. So the idea here is, mm -hmm. you know, using heating is, it, it's tough on a battery. You know, it uses mm -hmm. a lot of battery power. So what we're doing is we're just perfectly trying to optimize, mm -hmm. you know, use as little heat as possible to heat as little of the area mm -hmm. as possible but still have a very comfortable experience. And so that's what we're doing with the floor heaters. You know, okay. we're not gonna run the floor heaters 24 seven. It doesn't make sense. We're gonna All run right. those floor heaters only when you want warm feet, yeah. you know, underneath. Same yeah. thing with the seats, you know, okay. you're not gonna run those seat heaters at night unless yeah. you're the night owl. Yeah. And you Me personally, yeah. I'll probably <laughs> never be running the heaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, yeah. no, actually we're like, it was cold yeah, last night said, and we were well, here. Well, you just said you were driving in the snow once. <laughs> yes, I was driving in the snow once. I got caught in the snow and I grew up in New York in the snow. And for a minute, I didn't even know what to do because <laughs> I haven't seen the snow. Ask Lola. I had to call Lola in the middle of the night. I was like, it's snowing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I thought about it. I was like, oh, just keep driving. <laughs> Go so, easy. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you kind of miss that. These are uh, yeah. our new window yeah. covers. These are actually yeah. optional. Uh, so sometimes the options are more historical than anything right. else. We didn't have window shades. Mm -hmm. We were directing customers to third-party vendors, which mm -hmm. we still will if they want mm -hmm. to use those. But we okay. always knew there was something lacking. We tried mm -hmm. to convince the vendors to make what we wanted. And so this is the result. We, we really like this design. So it has these toggles. So, you know, if you don't want them, like, kind of in your way, you can mm -hmm. just pull them off. And then when you want to put them back up, you put the toggles on. There's actually magnets built into the frame here. Mm -hmm. So it holds in place. And then, you know, if you don't want to have to store them somewhere, they roll up. So you okay. know, and they just Velcro up in place. With the pop top, is that optional or not? So the pop top is theoretically optional. Right okay. now, all, all, all of our models have pop-up tops. Pop -up. So I would say probably uh, late 2023, maybe 2024, we'll start building some. There's no reason we can't build one without a pop-up top, and it would be a nice build. Okay. But right now, we're just kind of like trying to put our heads down and build a lot of the same thing. Okay. All right. Very cool. Let's go outside here for a little bit before we uh, 
before we wrap up. Everything else, I'm guessing, is your... Yeah, very similar. Do you similar. guys have any kind of special... No, this doesn't have like any kind of special bumpers. No, this, do this, this does have some aftermarket rims. Um, okay. If you want to peek back here, this is actually kind of a, an upgrade that's coming. Okay. So right now... What um, is that for? So that's for an external solar panel. Oh, so okay. right now this has 510 watts on the roof. Okay. Um, our next generation of solar panels, which are literally on there, they may be here when I get back to California, mm -hmm. they may be there. Mm -hmm. They're going to be awesome. They're clear, so they're going to look really good. They're going to show the, mm -hmm. the paint of the van. I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with having a good looking roof. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they'll have the Modman's logo on them. So the, okay. the roof will be 600 watts. Okay. And that leaves room still for the AC. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a 400 uh, watt pack, a separate oh. pack that folds up. Very cool. And it has its own little stand, so you'll have 1,000 right. watts of solar available. Okay. Which which is pretty exciting. So, for example, in, in Florida, I guarantee you'll be able to run your 12 volt AC, you know, off the power that's generated from your solar system. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because it takes about 500 watts, so you're, you're ah. actually above that. So even if you're not pointed oh. perfectly at the Interesting. sun into the late afternoon, yeah. yeah so you, so you can actually be doing something with those batteries. Not a lot. You can't. Yeah, you know, a, a thousand a is a lot actually. Yeah. So at this show, this is just an example. Even 510 watts, I'm running all these TVs. Mm -hmm everybody's iPhones or whatever, everything's mm -hmm. plugged in and I will not even think about power okay. like this weekend. You know, like, I mean, mm -hmm. that's not a great example because it's mm -hmm. still a big battery, but mm -hmm. but yeah, the solar definitely helps in, okay. in that scenario. On the battery, how are we charging that battery back up? Just from driving? Um, well, so we can charge it with a solar. Solar. Right? And mm -hmm. we do have driving. Um, mm -hmm. And then the size of the charging depends mm -hmm. on which one of those batteries you have. Uh, so for the biggest battery, mm -hmm. um, we have a second alternator. Mm -hmm. It has 250 amps of output. Mm -hmm. And then we also include 100 amps of DC to DC. So we'll pull some mm -hmm. off of the factory alternator as well. So okay. you kind of have redundancy too. Oh, okay. We've seen so a lot of problems both. with those charging systems. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of like hemming and hawing about how to do it. And what right. we, that's what we decided to do. We decided to have okay. actually two kind of alternator charging one from the OEM alternator a second one the primary one okay. is, is the second alternator that, okay so that's good so yeah. you can get a little bit more of a charge in there yep. which you yeah which you and could. then plus it's uh, also almost all available at idle which is kind of okay unique. a lot of these systems you have to get it up over a certain rpm before mm -hmm. it charges in okay ours you can literally idle the van and it will it will almost charge at full blast yeah. okay yeah and um, and then is there shore power yeah there's a shore power okay. yeah so that one's a hundred amps mm -hmm. um, yeah 100 amps. Okay. All right, cool. Let's take a look. Oh, you got a nice big uh, box yeah, back so here. Yeah, this is the same as JT's. It's oh, just it is? not orange. Okay. Yeah, his yeah, is yeah, orange. Yeah. Okay. I'll open it up for you real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we offer this box in two sizes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a lot of things in, in kind of mod vans world, we actually built this box because we couldn't way. get exactly what we wanted from a vendor. Right. We wanted <laughs> boxes that were actually usable size perfectly for the transit. Right. Yeah, they maximized what was available in the transit. Mm -hmm. And you can see I had my grill. My mm -hmm. hose, my dirty shoes. Mm -hmm. These are kind of the dirty things, that, the smelly things that I just mm -hmm. don't want to bring inside the van. Yeah. So that's the smaller one. And just mm -hmm. to give you an idea, that one's sized perfectly, so you can mm -hmm. still use your window, mm -hmm. right? And then this one is for people who don't care about covering their window. Right. And then okay. you know that's what I'm saying about maximizing. When it's closed, you can still see the, the light, so we didn't have to move the, the lights that are regulated mm -hmm. by the you know. Mm -hmm federal government but then we relocate the bracket we do that for the customers oh I see and then here we have a little cutout mm -hmm. so you can still get your door but you still have this gigantic box yeah so there's always little subtle details mm -hmm. that are just not available from any vendor and that mm -hmm. was how we ended up it's that process mm -hmm. I was telling you about we had right. people that were begging for things like this yeah and we went we we're like okay we can make boxes we're really good at making aluminum yeah. boxes yeah I mean and, especially uh, yeah. for uh, the transit you know it's taking some time for everyone to get up to speed and actually have yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we're looking at the garage here. Yeah, so this is the one inch battery. It's mm -hmm. actually under this floor. The floor comes all the way through. Yeah. And so then, this is, yeah. Yeah, there's there's a one inch, you know, extra one inch above, you know, mm -hmm. our standard flooring, which would be um, a layer of insulation. Right. And a layer of plywood. Now we have a layer of insulation, the bottom of what we call our clamshell, mm -hmm. the battery, the top of the clamshell, and then the front is going to have steel plates for oh, okay. the seating and stuff is like that. Is there an emergency shutoff for this battery that's um, accessible? Yeah, there is an emergency shutoff. Okay. Um, th there's actually two. So, And then the, the battery management system itself has a shutoff as well. Oh, it does. Okay. So yeah, so there's a switch inside the cab. You can just flip mm -hmm. it off. The okay. battery, if, it, if, if the battery management system thinks there's something wrong, it will actually shut itself down. It will. Okay. And then there are uh, fuses that are accessible. Mm -hmm very large fuses on both mm -hmm. the positive and negative sides so mm -hmm. you can open up and find those fuses and 
you know, pull them out. Oh, okay. And actually disable the band. Okay, cool. Now, now if the battery was on fire, if the vehicle was on fire, you would not be messing with the fuses. You flip the switch and you hop right. out of the van. Yeah, exactly. that, that would be my exactly. That would be my my recommendation. Yeah, and you guys can get. I'm guessing that you're making you're making these we as make well. Those. That, that's part of the whole system. Yeah, so they're yes. in all the windows. Right. Oh, okay. So the garage has a light. And okay. With, with this little switch. Yeah. Um, a lot of storage. I mean, you're losing yeah. something here because the fridge is there. Yeah, so we actually, but. this is one of the few floor plan options that Mod mm -hmm. Vans offers that's like kind of a full on alternative. Right. So we have an alternative floor plan which actually removes this. So this mm -hmm. becomes pass through, pass through storage. Okay. And then remember that cabinet where the third row could be? Mm -hmm. That gets replaced with a refrigerator cabinet. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. Yeah. And then this is this would be the toilet. No, uh, that's actually the 26 gallon water tank. Oh, that's this a, is just a water tank. Yeah, oh, right. Option. Okay. Yep. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. And then our standard water tank, which you can actually see behind my backpacks there, that's mm -hmm. a 25 gallon water tank. Okay. So it has 51 gallons total. Oh, okay. So you have, it's a lot of water, yeah. fresh water, yeah. right? Well, okay. so again, we're users of the bands. Mm -hmm. So we're well aware that, you know, you can carry a lot of food if you carry mm -hmm. canned food, you have, you know, yeah. there's a lot of ways to carry food. Yeah. So ultimately, if you're really going off grid, you want to take a big long trip, the water car carrying mm -hmm. capacity turns out to be your limiting factor, especially if you want to use that shower, right? Yes. So, yes, so yeah, so we're just like, what do we do? Yeah. Well, hey, we can put, you know, we figure yeah. out how to squeeze in 51 gallons. What's the black tank on this? Um, well, so the, the gray, cartridge got, toilet. Yes, yeah, so yeah, there's gray so tank. You don't is, have a black tank, excuse yep. me. The gray tank. That's 17 sorry. gallons. Yeah. 17. Okay, cool. And then the fill for this, is that related to the fill right there? That uh, so that's doesn't... actually the, the um, vent for the gray water tank. Oh, that's so, the vent. Okay. So when we build, we're an RVI certified manufacturer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of rules about how to vent the, the, the plumbing system. Right. In particular, the gray water tank. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the test for that is basically you overflow everything. And, uh, and the, the it's got a drain. Yeah, it has yeah. The, the vent basically has to be above the level of the, the okay. sink. So okay. it has to come up somewhere. So that's just where we brought it. It comes up all oh. the way there, and then okay. it actually goes outside right there. Okay, I see. Cool. Yeah. Is but there anything on the there. side here? A bunch of our stuff, probably. <laughs> yeah. So here's you've got a tire carrier back here. Excuse me. Yeah, this is the Mod Vans oh, tire lighter combo. Yeah. So again, you know, kind of coming back, we had some customers. A lot of these have pegs here on the side mm -hmm. and we had customers that literally like had fallen off and we were like oh that's not good so you know we were like asking ourselves you know it looks like we could just put some rungs on the side and so mm -hmm. we did yeah uh, so, you know, okay yeah I've got some pegs on the side of mine yeah and and we had customers and actually I've read group posts before where they're like oh, yeah I gotta check those <laughs> I was trying to get up <laughs> and, uh, and I fell because <laughs> yeah, it is yeah you yeah. gotta check them and make sure they're tight yeah okay <laughs> very nice and then this is the big beefy bump out that we were talking about that actually goes this is was the other one just like this big and yeah, yeah it's a big long it's bump just, out here you know it, unless you're really you know prepared for it it doesn't make sense so, right and that's yeah. and that was really the effect that we were going for we wanted right. it to look like when you're standing away from it you can't even see it right yeah yeah we didn't want it to make like a feature of the van Okay, and that's standard on every van? Uh, it's standard on the MH1. MH1. So we don't put okay. it on our small, smaller models. On our smaller models, the upstairs bed is the main bed. So, okay. Yeah, and the MH1, the downstairs bed is the main bed. Right, and then standing back here, I could see, I mean, I don't know whether or not you guys want to talk about it. Oh, you've you got, can show it, yeah. You've got Starlink, yeah. and then I forgot what these, uh, what is it? The, oh, that's the WeBoost. The WeBoost. Yeah. So PJ, thanks, man. I yeah, think that was you. really detailed. I think people out there who are interested in mod vans just got a lot of details. However, if they have more questions, more things they want to know about, where do they go to get that stuff? Actually, right now, there's two places they can go. Mm -hmm. The main place they can always go is to our website, mm -hmm. www.modvans.com. Mm -hmm. And we have online pricing. That's actually how you order your vehicle. You'll get mm -hmm. an estimated delivery date. All these questions you had about the options and how much they cost, a lot mm -hmm. of that information is online. And we do have some videos. We also have a YouTube channel, which you can find. It's the Mod Vans YouTube channel, which mm -hmm. we have. Uh, your videos will be in our playlist for sure. Oh, cool. Thank so you. So do check out the playlist. A lot of people, right. don't, they go to your channel, and they're just like, oh, what videos they have? And I'm like, right. oh, I made this really nice curated playlist yeah. that includes all our favorite videos. But right, exactly. Most people don't get it. They're like, okay, yeah. yeah. And then the other thing they can do is they can go to our investment campaign. We have all we have an investment campaign. It's on WeFunder mm -hmm. forward slash Mod Fans. That's actually the investment campaign and if you like what you see and you're like oh man these mod van guys they got it going on and 
you know, how do I participate without mm -hmm. buying a two hundred thousand dollar vehicle? That's mm -hmm. one way you can do it. You can invest uh, as little as two hundred fifty dollars, okay, and you actually buy a little bit of stock in the company, okay, cool, and you know, just kind of join us on the ride and right. see what happens. And you'll get Absolutely. a bit, you know, not too many, but you'll get pretty regular updates about our progress, right? Um, and you know, we post those to anybody who wants them, but mm -hmm. you know, of course, you know, our investors are going to get it, and we're going to have it'll be fun. Actually, uh, I didn't even think about this when we were talking earlier, but we're going to have an investor day mm -hmm. uh, coming up pretty soon. So once a year, um, starting only in twenty twenty one. So this will be our second one, mm -hmm. but uh, um, we had an investor day in 2021. Our investors loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, they really like, you know, we present, you know, yeah. kind of our vision for the mm -hmm. future, what we've accomplished, right. and we're going to do it in 2020, 2022. We're running out of time, so right, man. So, so it's coming up soon. I think yeah. it's going to be in November. Okay, and we'll have this van again to show to have our investors kind of crawl through or whatever. We'll okay. be doing it at our shop in Oxnard, so that'll be fun too. So okay. and we'll again, if you go to our website, you'll find eventually a place to subscribe to our newsletter, mm -hmm. um, or you can go to our WeFunder page and you get the updates there. And then mm -hmm. you know we'll of course be making those announcements. Yeah. And, the, the event will be free or you can attend online to you know be there um, mm -hmm. people are welcome to ask questions we actually love the questions it's always interesting to see right. <laughs> what's on people's minds yeah right absolutely yeah I think if uh, folks are interested in seeing more from mod vans on our channel we do have the video that we did last year as well as you guys are like our favorite you know most innovative van like mm -hmm. number one for us and I think yeah you guys are still doing it and innovating in the space here probably the next step for us is we gotta actually get our hands on one of these vans yeah, we're looking you know to that and get out there and use it out uh, you know actually use it and see how everything works out you know in the field yeah, yeah yeah in the field so we'll work on that and maybe we'll come back to folks with that but thanks a lot okay, i really thanks. appreciate you taking all this time Hold to on. give us all these details yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry you guys all okay. my stories you're yes. officially family now you put up with me <laughs> absolutely all right guys thanks so much for hanging out with us here on this video mm -hmm. at the 2022 overland east i think this is it for me and lola i know that it's already closed everything's already closed down so thanks so much we'll have more videos for you guys we're out peace thank you